Have you ever imagined how society would treat you if you were born a different gender? Would your parents expect you to be assertive or submissive? Would teachers encourage you to study science or nursing? Would you be kept calling the street or be the one kept calling? Would it be more likely that you become an executive or serve tea in meetings? Sexism is any unfair treatment based on sex and is deeply ingrained in Japanese society. Not only in Japan, but we all grew up in communities with gender norms and values. We internalize gender based expectations and unconsciously behave accordingly. What's the antidote? Feminism. The belief that women and men should have equal rights and the movement to end the systemic oppression. In Japan, the term feministo, a transliteration of feminist, has a different meaning than in the West. Back in the day, it meant men who are gentle to women, and now it's women who hate men. Working as a journalist in a national newspaper for more than a decade, I knew that the media could influence public opinion about systemic injustices. I wondered about the role that media plays in sexism and Japanese feminism. Now, as a PhD student, my dissertation asks how did the press address sexism and report on feminism? And when women stood up for their rights, how did the news portray their activism? To answer these questions, I'm examining the print media portrayal of two cases the women's liberation movement in the 70s and the recent hashtag feminist activism. Using key search terms, I collected more than 1,000 news articles across five national newspapers. Building on frame analysis literature, I applied a combination of grounded and thematic analysis to investigate the newspaper data by coding and category development. My initial analysis reaffirmed my hypothesis. By large, the print media validates sexist gender norms and ignores feminist activism. Traditional news organizations don't change overnight, but identifying the biased nuances in reporting will incrementally bring change to journalism. Once the Greek philosopher Socrates likened himself to a godfly buzzing around a huge sleepy horse representing the Athenians, the fly stings the horse. The horse wakes up and tries to kill the fly, but the horse is awakened. When I publish my dissertation, I hope Socrates' horse doesn't try to kill me. <laughs>